welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now today's video is actually a response to one of my lovely viewers and I just want to say thank you to all of you who watch this channel. Uh, I absolutely love interacting with you on the comments and there are just so many wonderful people from all different parts of the world too. It's absolutely fascinating to see the different countries that come up, um, you know, and I can tell on the Too Many Planets video, for example, I have a lot of people asking me questions from all different parts of the world there. That is just fantastic. And today's question is in response to Cup Noodle Kitty. Cup Noodle Kitty, hello. I love your name for a start. I think it's fantastic. When I saw it, I was like, why didn't I call my business Cup Noodle Kitty? I don't know why I didn't do that. Uh, and you've got a question here. Could you make a video on Vipreet Raj Yogas? I can, and I probably will take that one on on my Instagram. Now I've got a new Instagram guys it's very exciting. I launched it last week and um, some of you are already on there. I, I didn't even put, post anything and then I had all these people and I'm like wow cool. So um, hello to any of you who are on that Instagram. It's Vedic Life Coach is the Instagram. You are very welcome to stay on my personal Instagram which is swati.3 um, S-V-A-T-I dot three. So please uh, join me there as well. But um, I'm going to have to update links and things and uh, put the new one Vedic Life Coach there. So I think I might tackle this. Could you make a video on Vipreet Raj Yogas? I might do that there on Instagram because we do have video on there. Um, you're allowed up to a minute of video. So they're very short videos that you get there. Uh, but that's good. It, it encourages me to be very efficient, which is something I need. I've got a little timer here, so I'm going to try and be efficient here today right now. Uh, so Cup Noodle Kitty, your question just came in at the right time because today I was actually going to video my November Outlook. And instead I thought, you know what, I've got a couple of days. Let me, let me have a look and see what I can do here. I have had a couple of other requests super quickly. Uh, I think it was Iron Empress, if I'm not mistaken, wanted um, a video on Uranus in Aries that is still on the list. Uh, I'm just looking for the right time. I need to sit down and study some of that stuff. Um, and I think we also had a request by Ayush. Hello, Ayush, if you're watching. And um, I know we looked at doing the SRK, Shahrukh Khan. He's someone I'm probably going to do on the Instagram uh, because I'm going to, what I'm going to do, you'll see on the channel, I want to do retrospectives of really super famous people who've passed away. And I kind of think that's appropriate to talk about the chart of someone who's no longer with us um, because there's a lot of talk amongst astrologers about is it ethical to do that, is it not, um, so on and so forth. Now on the Instagram you'll notice I've already done one. I've done a little thingy on Prince Charles um, and that is actually kind of an interesting one because I explore the question of has the British public correctly intuited his chart without even having seen it. Um, now I feel like it's okay on Instagram to do, to, to, I'm not going to show the chart in full. You'll see how I do it. I've got a whiteboard right here in front of me, and um, I think if if somebody's still living, I think it's okay to show a couple of signature um, parts of the chart, but I won't ever show the chart in full. So that's how I'm tackling that one. And I also feel like it's okay to put it on Instagram because Instagram is not so easily searchable for that kind of content. So I feel like if the person is still around, I can feature them, but in a cut down sort of a way and on a platform where it's not so easy to um, get their chart, if you know what I mean. And here I'm going to save the YouTube for, um, you know, Marlon Brando is one that I'm yet to do. So hopefully stay tuned. I should be able to do that uh, soon. So now that the nights are going to fall quicker, I should be able to get some more time to record more content for you guys, which I'm really excited to do because I love doing this. So don't worry, there's more content coming, I promise. Um, but let's take a look at this second question, Cup Noodle Kitty. We've got all oh, what points to a change of fortune in a chart. Okay, now here's what I've done. I've done 
a little bit of a boo-boo. I've done a bit of a mistake here. What's happened is I read the question this afternoon. I'm going to keep an eye on the time as well. Um, I read the question this afternoon. I thought, oh, brilliant. And somehow in my head it got changed to, and I've just written some notes just this evening. On my notes I wrote, how do I unlock, unlock the fortune of my chart? And then before starting the video, I had a little re-look at your question, Cup Noodle Kitty, and I've discovered that I have totally answered the wrong question. I've done the wrong question. So now your question is what points to a change of fortune in a chart? And I've got the question, how do I unlock the fortune of my chart? They're two very different things. So um, I, I totally apologize. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly answer your question now. What points, and then we'll go through the notes of this, because this is kind of interesting, I think. How do I unlock the fortune of my chart? I think that's kind of interesting. Uh, so we'll do both. So what points to a change of fortune in a chart? Okay. I would say, and this is the beauty of Vedic astrology, definitely a change of Mahadasha, for example. You know, a Mahadasha is a grand period of time and an Antardasha is a sub-period of time. So if you're running a grand giant period of time, like Saturn, for example, which I'm pretty sure is 19 years, then, you know, um, you're definitely going to feel the time change. So what points to a change of fortune in a chart? A change of Mahadasha, for example, a change of time cycle. You could be going through um, a really fantastic uh, period of time. Let's have a look here on my, uh, got my free chakra, no, not my free chakra chart, my free star chart. Let's have a look at these Mahadashas in order. So let's say, well, let's say you're running a beautiful Jupiter Mahadasha. And it's just sensational. You've got this glorious, exalted Jupiter and he's really well placed and he's producing and you're earning and um, it's wonderful. And then you click into a Saturn Mahadasha and your Saturn is badly placed and it's afflicted and there are all kinds of problems. And, you know, um, and, and, and you'll notice that an entire time period, it's like an era of your life. It takes on a certain quality due to that planet. And then... So what, what points to a change of fortune in a chart? Clicking into a new Mahadasha and, and, and a different, you know, run by a very different planet. Uh, definitely going through, say, for example, an Antardasha of a debilitated planet. I have personal experience with that and I can tell you, uh, yeah, I've noticed um, a change of fortune during times when that particular planet is in operation. Uh, not a lot happens, I can tell you that. Um, so that's definitely a change of fortune in a chart. What else points to a change of fortune in a chart? I was also think thinking that Sade Sate is another thing. Um, you can enter Sade Sate period and that can change the nature of your fortune. Right before a Sade Sate, you should have good fortune because Saturn wants to give to you to set you up for that time. Then you go over the moon and then as soon as you come out of that seven, seven and a half year period, um, Saturn wants to reward you again. So there's a little change in fortune right there. Saturn will reward you um, three, six and 11. So in those, in those parts of... Uh, the chart absolutely so that leads me to you know what else points to a change of fortune in a chart transits so your birth stars are in a certain configuration and as the planets move around you know how they touch your fixed natal stars that's going to cause you know you might be profiting from that experience you might be feeling the pinch it might not be comfortable uh, so that can be something that points to a change of fortune in a chart. Now, I think that kind of answers that question. I really hope it does. Let's have a look at the completely different question <laughs> that I wrote my answers to. Uh, let's bring it up. So I, for some reason, in my very interesting brain, somehow thought 
about the question, how do I unlock the fortune of my chart? Which is a different question. But it's a question nonetheless, and it is interesting. And how, how do I unlock the fortune of my chart? You know, um, this, this is kind of interesting. Now the answers may not feel hugely satisfying. These are the kind of answers that, you know, when you ask a wise person a question and then they give you some kind of flippant little answer or they, or they ask you another question or something annoying like that, that's how these answers are going to feel. <laughs> so I apologize in advance, uh, but that's just how this is. I, I just threw this together in the last 10 minutes. So, um, so let's take a look. Let's have a look what was going on in my brain at the time. So how do I unlock the fortune of my chart? So this is not what points to a change of fortune, which I think we've covered. This is something quite different. And it taps into a few things. So, and it's kind of, we, and that's why these questions are a bit abstract and a bit high level because it is a bit of a sort of higher level abstract question and we're going to have to get a bit spiritual. So, so let's go for it and I'll see how quickly I can do it because I've already spent 11 minutes. I can't believe it. Okay. Answer number one, how do I unlock the fortune of my chart? By living your life. I told you, I told you this was going to be infuriating. That's an annoying answer, isn't it? But it's true. <laughs> How do I unlock the fortune of my chart? By living your life. So this does, it doesn't matter if you know astrology or not. You're going to find out. You are going to know <laughs> exactly how much fortune is in your chart just by living your life. Um, it kind of, I'm kind of thinking of that Woody Allen, you know, show up kind of thing. I'm pretty sure he was the one that talked about just show up, you know, or um, yeah, that's that's the majority of success. Success is just showing up on time. Someone told me that actually. They told me that um, with a job interview, showing up and smiling gets you 50% across the line. And I remember hearing that very early on and it was one of the best bits of advice I ever got because it instantly put me at ease because how easy is it to turn up to an interview and to smile? Very easy. Um, you know, so you're already over halfway through. If you can go in with that attitude, you'll go, you'll go great through an interview. Uh, but anyway, this answer by living your life, where does this come from? Well, I've got a, a note here that in earthly terms, what seems like paying up might actually be cashing in on another dimension. And I'm going to give you an example of someone who I know really, really well. I've got 13 minutes, so I'm, I'm going to speed through. I'm not going to go as in-depth into this answer as I would like. Um, but I know someone very, very well who uh, had Parkinson's for a very long time, 15 years in fact. Um, I can tell you something, his Sadi Sati was absolutely amazing. That was a fortunate period of his life. Sometimes Sadi Sati is a good time. Um, oh dear, I've got it. Ooh, wasn't expecting that. See, this is what happens when I put my phone in front of me, I get distracted. Um, he had Parkinson's for 15 years. Very ill. It, it didn't. It happened outside of his sadi sati. The sadi sati was brilliant. Lots and lots of th wonderful things happened. He was very busy. His Saturn wasn't brilliant. You'd expect a better Saturn, um, but you know Saturn was okay. But he had a very good and productive and uh, rewarding sadi sati. It's it's been known to happen. Look at Donald Trump. He's in sadi sati right now, and I think it started for him in 2011. And I'm saying this because I've got a client who um, her Sadi Sati is coming up and I was saying that it's coming up and I think she was um, a, a bit concerned about that and I was saying, look, no, it can be a very, very good time of your life, uh, especially if you have a good Saturn. So this example of this person who very ill for a good 15 years, um, very close person to me, that's where this, this line comes from. In earthly terms, what seems like paying up might actually be cashing in on another dimension. Because when I saw him so ill and when I saw him go through what he went through, 
I just thought, I just knew that he's making progress on some level that I just don't understand or comprehend. There's got to be some reason for that. People do sometimes ask me about suffering and about, you know, well, why, why does someone choose a disabled body or why, um, why do people have to suffer? And I've heard from very spiritual people that um, if you can take a really hard incarnation here on earth, it's like what's waiting for you on the other side is just so extraordinary. It's so out of this world that we, we can't comprehend it here. I once heard a British guy say that um, to take an incarnation in India is the best thing you can possibly do. I think I've said this on the channel before. And he said that, like, that's why everybody, that's why it's such a populated place. Everybody wants to be there because when you take a, an incarnation there, and especially if you take, for example, a hard one, then, um, you know, you've just clocked up the most wonderful, I don't know, afterlife or, or whatever it is, however it works. I'm not fully sure. But, yeah, by living your life, that is a way to unlock the fortune of your chart. How about that? I could talk about this slide for another hour, guys. I really could, but 16 minutes already and I've got a few more answers to go through, so I'm going to scoot through. Uh, the other answer I have here is by, so the headline is, by learning to fall in love with your own life. How about that? Someone asked me, what do you do as an astrologer? One of my friends, and I said, um, I gave the answer, well, I help people fall in love with their own life. And that might sound corny. It might sound extravagant. But I think there's some truth to it. I mean, you know, as a coach, I lend you my objectivity. Uh, as a coach, I give you a space in which you can be yourself. And it's a very non-judgmental space. You can come and tell me anything and I will I am there for you and I don't judge you and you know if anything I support you and I believe in you and I think you're wonderful because when I see your chart when I see the pure essence of who you are I can see the promises that you've made I can see what you've intended to come here to do I can see your magnificence I can see your purity I can see a lot of good things so you know when people come to me as a coach um you know, I, I'm totally there to, to help them uh, to provide a space, hopefully, in which they can start to fall in love with their own life or embrace their own life or realize, you know what, wow, I actually have a really good life here, um, which, which we all do. Anybody who's got an access to a computer, because that's how you have to find me. I'm not advertising anywhere else. Actually, I did put an ad in my local cafe and have had people come through that. So that's fantastic. Uh, some of my in-person sessions have come through that. But otherwise, everybody's coming to me is coming to me through a computer. And um, so if you've got a computer, then you're doing good in this life. You know what I mean? Like, that is true. So... Um, so yeah, what notes have I got here? By learning to fall in love with your own life. All spiritual work is designed to help us become more aware. Very true. Astrology is one of the best spiritual tools for enhancing your awareness. That's absolutely true. We've got to remember that this is a tool and it provides information. It's Now the information that comes at that is not to be confused with our life. Okay, really important. Now the teacher to go to for this is Eckhart Tolle right? Go to Eckhart. He will teach you and teach you very well how words are just pointers to the truth, but they are not the truth, right? So astrological information is just information. It's not your life. It's not what happens. It's, not, it's like um, John Lennon said, life is what happens while you're making other plans, right? So We've got to remember that. Um, and I have an example here, but look at that. It's 19 minutes, so I'm going to scoot along. What's the next answer to how do I unlock the fortune of my chart? By learning astrology. Ooh. 
point did I go through that? Oh no, I didn't. It just uh, just some of the notes matched. So by learning, you can see I've written this in a very rushed way, haven't I? Uh, by learning astrology. So that is absolutely true. You can unlock the fortune of your chart by learning astrology. I mean, well, for sure. I've got a note here that it gives you a map of karmas, like getting a weather report, for example. So if Sade South is coming, you save a bit of money beforehand because Saturn should be giving you some good rewards or something um, it's like I kind of liken it to uh, a weather report as well that's another thing that we can liken astrology to it's like did I just say that a moment ago sorry I'm just reading my notes as well yeah like getting a weather report so I mean yes yeah, so it's like you know stormy weather take an umbrella Saudi South is coming save a bit of money uh, it's that kind of thing helps you to accept what you can't change yeah absolutely there are certain things we can't change but it's already 21 minutes and the camera is about to fall over I can just feel it because the camera dies at about 24 minutes I think we know that by now uh, how do I unlock the fortune of my chart another answer is by asking what are the promises that I've come to live up to this is huge. This really is something that I came to through the Vedic system. I studied the Western system quite a lot before coming to Vedic. And I think with the Western system, we can kind of fall into this mode of thinking where we look at a chart and we're like, well, what am I going to get? When am I going to get married? When am I going to have kids? When am I going to earn millions? When am I going to get a promotion? When am I going to, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and the Vedic system and this concept, you would have heard me talk about this before and I would have held up this very book, Light on Life, by Hart Defoe and Robert Svoboda. These guys, and I was trying to find the quote so that I could quote it precisely to you guys, but I wasn't able to find it because I ran out of evening as I'm looking at the clock and I'm running out of evening right now. Um, but yeah, we asked the question, what are the promises that I've come to live up to? not what am I going to get from my chart. And when you start looking at a chart in that way, what are the promises that I've come to live up to? That is definitely when you start taking your life to new level and, and, and better levels and higher levels. I'm starting to do that. I've got a lot of healership stars in my uh, set of charts and for the longest time I've met intuitives and energy healers and psychics and mediums and trans people and this and that and all kinds of different people and they all spend time with me and they all say you're a healer and I'm like yeah I know but what do I do with this thing or what do I what do you what what does that mean uh, and, and I've come to Vedic astrology and I'm like oh okay I can see now I can see the map oh I do have these stars oh I see it means I'm meant to help people I'm meant to you know and, and and I've found my modality I've found my way it's it's this it's Vedic astrology um this is this is the way for me you know so it's taken me a long time to get here a lot of seeking a lot of work since about 2006 but but I'm here now and uh you know yeah I look at my chart I, I do look at what are the promises I've come to live up to we've got one last slide it's 24 minutes it's all about to collapse uh, yes how do I unlock the fortune of my chart this was the other thing by reading hi everyone the camera just collapsed as I knew it was going to do it does that at the 24 minute mark I've stopped the timer now I'm putting the phone away so it won't distract me I'll probably only chat for another two three minutes anyway um, but in answer to the question I've got the final slide how do I unlock the fortune of my how do I unlock the fortune of my chart and the final slide says by reading and I held up this a course in miracles this is a fantastic read it is not a typical um, cover to cover read um, it's not like reading a love story or something like that although this is I mean gosh this is just about love basically uh, but but it's the kind of book that you, you dip in and out of. 
I was reading a few pages of this every day when I was at my old workplace. Um, this was late last year uh, when I was in the office in London every single day. For, I was probably there for about two or three months. And um, I used to read a little bit of this on my phone actually. I had it on my phone and I would highlight the bits that I really liked and I was reading a little bit each day with lunch. And it's a very beautiful read. You kind of read a couple of sentences and then you kind of look up and you ponder for a little while and then you go back and you read a sentence or two and you ponder and it's this it's a meditative experience reading this. It's it's not a traditional read. You know there are some books that you absolutely wolf them down. You just kind of read 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 and it's just this you know it's not that. Uh, this is a very different read. And why do I say that? Now, why I'm, I'm pulling up The Course in Miracles. Guys, it could be any book. It could be a book that you love. It could be the Bhagavad Gita. It could be the Tao Te Ching. It could be Seneca's Wisdom. It could be Khalil Gibran's The Prophet. Whatever really beautiful spiritual books you absolutely love and turn to. Um, Sufi poetry is gorgeous. There's so much that you can read. Uh, I read Rumi to reset my mind and heart and spirit sometimes you know I mean he's just wonderful but um, by reading such texts such deeply spiritual texts how does this help you unlock the fortune of your chart I know it seems like a bit of a leap here and I, this might not be a satisfying answer to many people but the truth is that your planets have conditioned you and your free will has conditioned you and your society has conditioned you and there's been a lot of conditioning going on especially from the ages of zero to seven and this is something that a lot of people have done a lot of research on scientists psychiatrists uh, the medical community all these kind of people zero to seven our minds are like sponges and we get conditioned now if you're very heavily conditioned um, you will definitely want to spend some time in life deconditioning that and when you decondition what society has told you, what your teachers have told you, what your parents have told you, when you remove that from your life and, and you decondition, you reduce all of that, um, what's able to happen is that your planets are able to work for you very beautifully, right? So your planets want the best for you at all times. And I tend to think that it's a misuse of free will and a, and a misconditioning or, you know, conditioning that hasn't gone well, that can prevent your good planets from working for you, right? So we really do need to spend some time in our lives um, reducing that. Other books you can read, The Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle, uh, a New Earth, I've got that right here under the camera. Uh, Anatomy of the Spirit, Caroline Mace. There's loads of books. There's heaps of books that you can read to decondition um, what's going on within you. A lot of planets, when they mature at a certain age, so we're looking at, I'm pretty sure Saturn matures at 36. I'm pretty sure I've got some of the dates on my website in an article, so you can have a look if you like. Um, Different authors have different dates around that kind of thing, by the way. But, I mean, I tend to have particular ages. I tend to think 36, 42. These are pretty significant times. And, and really, once I think once you're about 40, 42, I think, you know, the tough stuff should be over. And then what you're left with, you're left with the habits that have formed over that first 40 years of life. And... You know, you can start your deconditioning work then, but hopefully you've had a bit of a head start and, and you've had the opportunity to start deconditioning earlier. And if I've got any younger view, and I know I've got some younger viewers on the channel, I know I've got some really young viewers. I remember doing um, a little mini reading for someone who was 14. Uh, she got in touch and I was blown away by that. I was so happy. I was like, wow. I have a rule, I won't work on children, but if children approach me directly, I will. So, um, and well, 14 is not a child, I know. Uh, but, you know, I mean, you're definitely a teenager at 14. Um, but yeah, I mean, gosh, imagine that. Imagine if you start kind of deconditioning at a very young age. 
kind of asking the questions, who am I? What do I think? What do I want? You know, and then actively pursuing it and actively um, believing in yourself and going for it. Imagine that. Imagine doing that at a very young age. So if you're very young and you're watching this, well, wonderful. Start the start the deconditioning now if you can. You know, start really getting in touch with who you are and what you want. And uh, even without looking at your chart at all, you, you can start reaping the benefits. Because I believe everybody's chart has good and bad in there. You know, every single chart has uh, wonderful things to, as I like to say, cash in on. As I've probably said throughout some of these slides, cashing in or paying up, you know, we're we're paying up or cashing in, and, and that's very Saturnian in nature. But, you know, we've all got Saturn in our chart somewhere. and But we've all got all the planets, you know, and they're all um, wanting us to do well. So, guys, I think I'm going to wind it up because I'm probably waffling again. How are we doing? Seven minutes. Look at that already. I thought I just talked for two minutes just there. Okay. Well... It's been a pleasure and Cup Noodle Kitty, I hope I've got your name right. I hope you've liked this video. Um, if I have any other requests, if, if people want me to do the things, I certainly will do Cup Noodle Kitty. I got it right, yep. And yes, um, I think it's Iron Empress. I hope I've got your name right too. And Ayush, I know you guys are sort of waiting for videos, but um, I think the Uranus one, I think I would like to do that on the YouTube though, but the SRK might go on the Instagram. So we'll see how we go. But uh, I want to thank all of you who are watching now and I should be hopefully this week recording the November Outlook. So stay tuned for that and stay tuned for lots more content. I can't wait to make another video. I absolutely love doing this work. And thank you to everyone out there who, um, as I said, interacts with the channel and, of course, has booked me. You know, I just, I love doing this work. It's really cool. So I look forward to seeing you next time.